It's a good thing this isn't a podcast about football gambling or baseball gambling or basketball gambling because you should unsubscribe because we can't pick a winner <laughs> to save our ass. Luckily, it's Dirty Mo Doe where we talk NASCAR gambling. I'm your host, Steve Latar. We've got producer Trav in the house. Tampa Tim's fancy studio. Tampa, where are you at? I'm at the DJD studio. Ooh, and then we have the professor, Emmy in tow, over his shoulder. Guys, our degenerate four packs are disgusting. I'm sorry. This one's on me. I mean, disgusting. It, it, but, this, this week wasn't disgusting, though. I, I let us down, but you three hit. Oh, I wasn't going to pick on just on you. We're all in this together. We all have mm-hmm. an oar. Now, literally, you ran us aground before the other three even had a chance to paddle. But, I mean, we couldn't cash out because you can't cash out on a loser. <laughs> I mean, I need, we but, needed but, four points. Let me go ahead, though, and tip my hat. I told the professor it's about time he got his predictor right. And last week, it was one for one. Kyle Larson at the top. I guess if you predict Kyle Larson every week, you're bound to be right five or six times a year. (laughs) Yeah, but hold on. You gave me such shit about SVG being where he was, and he wasn't a factor all day. I said the line was over under seven and a half, and he finished? Seventh. But Vegas had him as as the top dog. Well, Vegas was full of shit. Okay. I just can't believe they didn't go right off your odds. Matter of fact, I had a, a long-time listener send me a very direct test message. He said, let me get this straight. You bitch when the predictor looks like the odds, and now you bitch that the predictor doesn't look like the odds. And I said, yeah, I just like bitching to, to the professor. And he goes, fair enough. And I'm like, okay, you get it. You get the whole model of the podcast. Um, so let's talk about the race before we move along. Tampa, Roval, Roval weekend, profitable? Yes, yes, very profitable. I cashed out AJ and Bell win win bets, so made profit on those because uh, Larson dominated. I thought Bell could have gave him a run for his money, but Larson dominated. Uh, Austin Dillon, two laps down because of that wheel, cashed the over 13.5, so that made profit. And I got screwed on Bowman over Suarez. That thing was a lock. Oh. And the DQ, my book that I placed it on, waited till the after the inspection – I know Trav placed it, and he got he got cashed out. I saw a couple people on Twitter uh, got theirs paid off, so that's good. So, so let, let's, let's dig into that. Let's just dig into that whole conversation. Let's start with the gambling side. I'm going to put my crew chief hat on. We're going to talk about the rules. What do you want to do first, Trav, the gambling, gambling. rules? Gambling. All right, let's talk about the gambling because I'll be honest. I am definitely not reading the fine print. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to call them out by name. But So Tampa and Trav, you are on two different books. One book paid off on – I said no fine print. You saw the professor laugh like he knows. I'm yeah, not well, even he doesn't even read the regular print, so let alone yeah, the fine print. That. That's, so, why has, that's so, why he married legal. So, for <laughs> fact, you know, oh, absolutely. Um, so one book paid off on race results unofficial, like checker flag. Is that what you're saying? And one waited until posted official. Is that what happened? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I checked. I saw one person place the same book. They actually uh, cashed his as a winner and then – Bowman gets DQ'd, took it as a loss, which I, I didn't see that. I just saw mine pending until they officially uh, the results were official, and I got mine. So it was a loss. Was a loss. It, let me just make sure. This wasn't a scratched bet. This was a loss because Suarez outran Bowman. Yes, loss. Because Bowman, Russ, gets credited for last place finish. Everything, yep. In but but he does get credited like he was in the race. My point is he did. it's not like he didn't take part like a horse that was scratched. It's like he took part, but he got one point for finishing last. Yep, and they even right. move him in the stages too. Because remember, he won a stage too. Oh, that's okay. Sorry, back that up. So you're saying they even take out his stage finishes as well, in case you had a hypothetical. I haven't seen a matchup in a stage, but we've seen crazier things. That's yep. I didn't know that. That's crazy. So the result is that Bowman now is out of the playoffs. Now the disqualification didn't disqualify him for the playoffs. I want to make sure everybody understands this. If he had won either Talladega or Kansas, then he would still would have advanced. It's not because he was disqualified that he eliminated from the playoffs. It is his Charlotte finish was disqualified, which then removed points, which was his pathway forward. Shifted him down the points, then you take the highest guys in points. That's what put Logano in. Is that correct, Professor? Make sure I have the details correct. Correct. Even if he would have had enough points, like if he would have came in like near a lock, um, he would have still moved on if he had enough points in the first two races. It's good. It's good. Now let's talk about the infractions. Very simple. 
every car has a minimum weight that's required when they roll through inspection. It's not exactly the same for every car because they take driver weight into account. For instance, the five car without Kyle Larson in it has to weigh more than the 38 car with big old tall Todd Gilliland, right? Because Todd probably weighs 200 and something pounds and Gilliland's probably, or, and Larson's probably 150 pounds. So they do the math for the theory. They make each driver weigh in a few times a year that when the driver straps in, they're all the same total weight driving off pit road. Does that make sense? So like some cars have to weigh 3,400, some weigh 3,420, some weigh 3,440. That's because of your basic weight of your driver who's going to get in. You know, we don't want the driver sitting in the car going across inspection. That's silly. So now we'll just say 3,450. That's a nice, easy number. We're going to say we roll across. You have to be 3,450 pounds pre-race. Post-race. Your obligation is to be within one half of 1%, which would be, call it 17 or 18 pounds. It's small math, whatever you want to say. 17 is what Brad Moran called it. So there you go. We'll call it, you know, so now that 3450 now has to weigh 34, uh, whatever the math is, 33. 3433 is what that car has to weigh. You are allowed to add fuel per the rule book, but per the rule book, that's all you're allowed to add. In NASCAR's judgment, they can let you, you know, they're, they're trying to use their common sense. Apparently, there was an argument. Maybe he ran hot looking at the data. Maybe he pushed some water out. So they did let him plug the water system in, making sure that the car was completely full of water. So now fuel's added by the rule. They're allowed it. They, they are over and above the rule book. NASCAR says, we're going to let you add some water, too, because I don't think NASCAR wants anybody to be light. Their goal is not to throw anybody out. That's a headache for them. Like, they want no part of this. So they let him add water. They go on the scales multiple times. It's not a one-shot deal. They're still deemed to be below the total weight required, even given the half percent leeway. Therefore, they're out. They are disqualified. Surprising to me because normally cars gain weight over the course of the race because tire rubber sticks and lands kind of all over the car. I would say there's like a 10 or 15 pounds of tire rubber. Now, maybe not at the Roval. Maybe, you know, it's different for each track. Um, I'm not going to speculate on how they became light. I can absolutely foresee engine oil being burned. I could see the driver drinking two gallons of water in his Gatorade system. You know, there's other things that I can see. The simple fact is NASCAR throw them out. Hendrick Motorsports said we're going to look at it overnight. Then Hendrick Motorsports responds on Monday that said we were too close to the tolerance. It's on us. We're not appealing. Jeff Gordon then went on Sirius XM and said, hey, listen, we're embarrassed, right? We didn't do our job. We were too light. I'm going to take him for face value. There's no reason to throw stones here. NASCAR did their job. Hendrick said, we're not going to appeal, and the 48's out. I hate it for Alex Bowman, who's done a monster job. He has no idea how much the car weighs. Um, And for the fans that say, well, what does five pounds matter? Well, put a five-pound vest on and go run a mile, right? And then take the five-pound vest off and go run a mile. Like, weight matters, and I'm sorry you can't pick and choose how much weight matters. NASCAR has given you a half percent. It's in the rule book, and you're out. This is no different than a fighter not making weight. Like, you got to make weight. So – Pre-race inspection was Saturday. Is it before practice and qualifying, or when did they originally make weight? So they would make weight before qualifying. Cars are pushed through before qualifying, um, basically, full of fuel. They go to pit road. You have to qualify full of fuel. You qualify, and then the next day you warm it up, you top it off with fuel, and you race. There are a list of adjustments, but they're like driver comfort. So, for instance, like I said, the car should only get heavier. You know, like say you qualify without your driver system in and then you put a fresh water bag in, right? So what you don't want to do is have five gallons of water in for qualifying and only put a gallon in for the race. You're going to be light. You know, so – and the other thing I just want to say is I'm not accusing anyone of anything nefarious. Let's just make sure everybody understands the roles. Per the rule book, it is the team's responsibility to maintain a legal car. It is NASCAR's responsibility to inspect a car to make sure it's within the rules. It's not NASCAR's job to make sure the car stays legal. That's the team. The obligation of legality falls on the team. They have the rule book. It's their role to make sure their car is legal. I know that's crazy to say, but that's where the responsibility falls per the rule book. The team. It's no different than, Trav, if you and I are driving down the interstate and you're following me and I go by the cop at 15 over and you go by the cop at 15 over and he pulls you over and you say, hey, but the guy in front of me, he's going to say, I don't care about the guy in front of you. I caught you. It's your job to run the speed limit. I don't even have a problem if Hendrick was trying to do something to fair. Like NASCAR's built on trying to find angles. So if, if the forty eight team was trying to, you know, skirt the rules a little, like so be it. Though. Unfortunately, I don't think they're they trying to skirt the rules. But if you're allowed a half a percent, you don't want to come through the race twenty pounds heavy. Take what you're allowed. 
Yes, Professor. So, so would you run? Would you plan to run your car fifteen pounds light, knowing there's a seventeen? Well, you have, first of all, you have to make weight beforehand. So, you know, yeah, I guess your question is, hey, would you take a one gallon water bag out or a two gallon water bag out and put a one gallon in? You know, I'm sure. I'm not saying the 48. I'm sure in the garage, 36 cars, there are teams that make sure that they're not making the car heavier for the race, right? Um, I don't think it's ridiculous. I mean, years ago, I do think there was weight pulled out of the cars, you know, 20, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, back in the, you know, the 80s and the 90s. But in today's world, what I was waiting to see was, hey, did something break and fall off the car? And the question is, if it did and Hendrick found it, would anybody even care? That would have been an interesting appeal, but that's not what happened, or at least not what we've been told. So I want to take it for face value, which is the car weighed enough before the race, not enough after the race, disqualification, black and white, whether you like it or not. And Tampa Tim's didn't like it. Let me tell you. Now let's circle back to where we came from. Tampa Tim's unimpressed. I will say in my fantasy team, which I'm in a heated battle with Marty Snyder, cost me like 25 points because I lost all those points overnight. It stinks because Bowman was out running Suarez all day, and this is technicality. He loses, but you know who else didn't like this is uh, well, minus Denny Hamlin, who uh, ownership wise the forty five cars back in it. But the other drivers, I think they'd rather go up against Bowman than Logano in the playoffs. In the totally agree. You, you do not want now. Look, Bowman's had a monster playoff, and I, like I said, I feel bad for him because I think he's doing it right. But Paul Wolf and Joe Logano are sneaky dangerous. And they could go run like crap for eight, three weeks, or they could go win Vegas. Like I, I'm like, I'm just telling you, not the guy you want hanging around. This is the guy, you know, this is Alabama who just keeps Vandy in it for the second quarter, then the third quarter, and everybody's like, oh, but they're going to come and win. You want to step on their th- – you want to eliminate a team when you can. Take nothing for granted. You know, that's like going to sleep and say, oh, well, this – this under is going to hit for sure. There's only been 10 points scored. Or, oh, we're on the way to the over. I'm going to tell you, until the bet's cashed. Don't count your chickens. Especially if they're free range. <laughs> free range is out of the cage. All right, let's move forward. Come on. Now we're getting where the predictor. I don't want to see no bullshit colors. I don't want to see 15 different groups. We're going to a mile and a half, Las Vegas. If the predictor can't throw fastballs here, then this is going to be a three-man pod next week. So let's hear it, Professor. Fastballs are coming. Larson, Chase Elliott, Reddick, Busher, Gibbs, Christopher Bell. Wait, What? What? Are you reading the right model? Or did you send us the wrong one? Nope, we have to redo that. That's the Roval. Oh, Jesus. no, we're not oh, redoing it. No, Go ahead and open the Roval. This is back to, back to back weeks. <laughs> no, but that, this you is what I was going to I was gonna brag anything? on how well the... How well the predictor did. Last but, week, it's Al Geyer racing in Cup. Now, Jesus. I'm telling you, man, we are in a damn oh, this, this is why we don't give you your flowers, because then you do this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't know what's more confused. Professor's predictor or Chopper's bet slips? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I see no, another Chopper Check this out. Wait, we got to get a Chopper mention. He goes, you know, I'm pretty glad that Logano's back in it. I said, why? He goes, well... I might have been in the Miller Lights earlier this year. I have a Logano championship slip and three truck guys to win the championship that I thought I was betting for the race. (laughs) (laughs) You got to love it. That's funny. I love it. All right, let's try this again. Take two, Professor. Let's talk about Las Vegas. This one sounds a little better. Larson, Byron, Hamlin, Reddick, Bell, Chastain sneaks in there. I got no disagreement, I have to say. Everything is exactly like I thought. Um, and the guys that are just barely in tier two is probably right where I would put them. Chastain has to sneak in after, I mean, the big run at Kansas. Is that really what moved the needle for Chastain? Well, and he's finished top five in um, four of the five next-gen races at Las Vegas and 12th in the other. Vegas, he's uh, 11th in odds to win it all. The yeah. race. All three of my wins. Did win. you send me the spreadsheet? There's two first emails. Email. You have to go to the first email to get it. I just did. Yeah. I went there. It's I'm the not correct good at details, guys. Not it's good the correct details. one though, so you're good. <laughs> All right, let's hear it. Before we move along, um, I, I'm going to jump right in this because you know, as we know, Vegas is right there on top. Larson plus three forty, Byron eight fifty, Bell nine fifty. But I know there's a conversation there. Hamlick, Reddick, all a lot of respect. Speak it up, Tampa. What are you thinking? So. I love the Christopher Bell. I've already placed the win bet, but I got it yesterday at ten to one. When it opened, when the lines first came out, he was eleven to one on FanDuel. 
Now he's plus 950. I've seen a couple books already have him at plus 650 and plus 500. That's about where I would have priced him. That's why I liked him at 10, 10 to 1 and placed it. So he's moving like crazy. He was the fifth fifth, uh, fifth highest fa- fifth favorite behind Reddick and Hamlin and Byron. And now he's climbing back up to two where I think he belongs. So uh, some people are taking some action on Bell. That's probably the most movement I've seen in a while. Most disrespected driver in NASCAR, I think, by media. I blame myself and the books. No one ever wants to talk about Christopher Bell, and yet, you know, he wins. He yeah. runs great. He's up front. So kind of to your point, even the books may be a little disrespectful, but some of that sharp money came in right away and said, ooh, we're going to get on this Bell action right away. Had to be part of it, too. I'm, I'm part of that movement. You like to be the sharp money. Yeah. I Everybody to wants to stick their sharp money. <laughs> I felt sharp when I placed it. I'm not going to lie. All right. I like it. I like it. Um, Byron, I think, is a great bet. Yeah, um, I like Byron, what too. What was the finishing order in the spring, Professor? Give us a top five from Vegas in the spring. In the spring, it was Larson, Reddick, Byron, Chastain, Ty Gibbs. Okay. So there you have it. Um, spring finishers. So I like the Byron. And I like the Byron at eight fifty. I think you know, if, as long as you're still getting it close to double digits, I love that one. What do you make of <laughs> Larson being that heavy of a favorite? I think Vegas is scared. They don't want to have a lot of action on him. I think he's when he's good. I mean, look, when he dominates, it's an ass kicking. Whipped everybody at Bristol. Whipped everybody at the Roval. Now, it seems like the third race of each round is his signature. It wouldn't shock me if Larson wrecks. It wouldn't shock me if Larson wins. The only thing that would shock me is something in the middle. Didn't he win the first race of the round of eight last year? Yeah, he's won this race the last. He he's won the last two Vegas races, and he's swept both both of them too. So he hasn't lost oh, anything in Vegas. Last, last two, two fall Vegas races, or you mean last two times to Vegas? No, last two times, spring and the last fall. Is there if if all the drivers are at their best, pit crews are at their best, crew chiefs is Larson's the hands down favorite every week? Then right, best against best, I think he's the fastest. And they, when they and they just don't make mistakes, or when they do, they're catastrophic. And even if they're not their own doing, I don't want to blame him for the flat tire at Kansas, right? I can't say it was or wasn't. I, I think they ran over something. But when they have an issue, let's not call it mistakes. When they have an issue, either self-imposed or somebody else's, they aren't like, oh, come and tape it up. It's like, hey, man, we'll get them next week. They don't make a mistake and come in tenth. <laughs> no, that's what I mean. Um, all right, anything else to talk about tier one? Reddick. Noah love for Reddick at nine fifty. DH at ten to one. We know Trav's on it. It's a responsibility of the producer. He has to be on it. I actually have I've never I don't think I've placed I don't place DH bet to win. I feel like it's bad juju. Too emotionally invested. Yeah. Fair. Tier two, Blaney Elliott Wallace Bush. Tier two, Kyle Bush. Tier two, Kyle Bush. Yeah, he's moved up in the world. And the, and we want to talk about these because there's some value here. Blaney, 14 to 1. Elliot, 16 to 1. Bubba, 30. 30. I, I was going to say, I couldn't even get there. 30 to 1. The books have him 14th. And Kyle Bush, 16. So one outlier in Bubba. I feel yeah, like he's, he's run well here. Guys. He's run really well here in the past. Yeah, this is the wasn't this the site of the Larson Bubba push? It was, but then he's come back and he finished fourth um, last, not this past spring, but last spring. Um, he's he's led laps here. Um, I love the Bubba top ten. I don't know who orange is on this sheet, but I'm, or- I'm orange this week. I love the Bubba top ten at plus money. I love the Bowman yeah. top ten at plus money. Those are two cars. Bowman would have been a play. I mean. I think plus money top 10, that's a great bet. The way I look at it is I think like I think Larson Byron Bell probably wins this race. It's a guy who's going to move to Phoenix and it's a real championship contender. And then the other playoff guys like a Blaney and Elliott, you know, they're going to round out the top 10. I, I don't think it's going to be a shocking race, but Bowman and Byron, Bowman's not in the playoffs anymore, obviously, but uh, uh, Bubba, I mean, it was a great top 10 value at just plus money. The only guy that's laying in the weeds that, and I hate to say this, but DH just still, there's nothing I've seen that says it should happen other than who he is and what he's pulled off. I mean, he was basically driving to an advancement last year when he had a a flat or just wreck, broke, steering broke at, at Miami. You know, it's just, 
man with all the stuff around him. I don't know. I don't know. Look, maybe he'll just stay just good enough to keep advancing. But I think if you're, I guess what I'm saying is if you're a Hamlet fan, I think 10 to 1 is, is about as good a value as you're going to get on him. Once he wins, it's going to be like. Psh. But this round of eight, though, you can't just hang on. You're going to have to win. Just like. Do you so think Matt or- says you don't have to win, but I think attitude says you need to. If you aren't winning, you need to be a winning car. Like to, to advance, you need to be a guy that like top three or four in each stage, top three or four in the race, move on the next week. We've seen non-playoff drivers win in this round of eight. Do we see that? Well, there's only eight playoff drivers, so I mean, yes, it's possible, but but I we're don't back know. to the we're back to the ovals, though. We're not. Yeah, and listen, these eight races, these eight playoff drivers have accounted for twenty what, Professor? Twenty six of the thirty two. Yeah, something like that. I mean, it's gigantic. What about uh, Mr. Joey Logano? Well, the books love him at 15-1. to 1. The professor has him down. I think the books are ahead of us here. I think to bet Joey Logano, I needed to see a Chastain number of 20-1. to 1. Um, I'm not saying it's out of the realm. I'm just saying when we talk value, Tampa, I thought I was going to see a sneak in 20-25-1 to 1 action. 100%. The books, the top eight playoff drivers are the top eight guys on the board. I mean, this is they they weren't going to get beat on a playoff driver. You have to find the value in there, and Joey's not one of them for me. Yeah, he he's just struggled lately at Vegas and and a mile and a half. I think Tim's is right. It's the books. They just don't. They know people are going to bet the playoff drivers to so put them up there. I mean, I think the winning car team comes out of a playoff driver. If I was going to bet non playoff drivers, it'd be Kyle Busch, Chastain, or Gibbs. Um, but I I think Gibbs is kind of mailing it in for the, not mailing it in, but I think Gibbs is. You know, he's got teammates who are in the playoffs. It becomes much more complicated for him. I see a top five bet. You like Bell? Top five money plus 120? I do like Bell. Plus 120 is good. Good price. Hey, when you get on the Bell train, you sprinkle it everywhere. I like Bell, man. He's he's running really well. The past, like, six weeks, ten weeks, go as far back as you need to. He is so consistent. You're pot committed at this point, though, Tim's. I am. I'm, I'm waiting for the win bet really to cash. I like him in top ten parlays, too, if, with any driver of your choosing. I mean... Tim's at the point now where he's bet enough Bell to win lately that he can't pull out he this week, and that's it. the week. You, yeah, I mean he's been on he's been on black twenty four all night long on the roulette table. He can't walk if he walks away from the table. He has to run because you can't be two tables over where you hear black twenty four. You're like ah, <laughs> like you like like as a degenerate roulette player. If I'm hammering <laughs> the numbers, hammering the numbers, and I decide to walk away, it's a it's a trot. Like, I can't hear what the next number is. I need to, like, be completely clear of the table. And I can't walk by. If you walk by it, I'll, like, take, take a peek up at the board. Oh, sh- that would have been on 17. That would have been a winner. <laughs> if Bell wins these last, one of these last four races and I didn't bet on it, I'm already six feet under. I, I'm, I, I'm not breathing when that happens. All right. I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right. Uh, a couple other long shots. You like Gregson and host of our top tens, huh? Just super long shots. I like listen. Gregson's a Vegas guy. That's the connection. Hosevar Spire's got some speed. I, I think he's the best Spire driver. It's long shot odds, but I could see it happening. I mean, so Gregson was sixth here in the spring, but I think that's a different SHR than it is now. That is my fear. Yeah, especially with Briscoe not in the playoffs anymore. I don't know how much that whole organization really. Definitely some wind out of the sails for sure. All right, top 10 parlays. There's a stack of them. Man, so I just don't – I don't know. Man. I'm trying to find some of these I like, but I don't – I'm blah, blah, blah. I like Byron Reddick. I like Hamlin Reddick. I like Byron Bell. I like Bell Reddick. But at minus money? Yeah, but they're almost even. Minus 105. I mean, five points of juice is like buying a cup of coffee. Just, just asking the question. No, no, it's a good question, but it's, it's, yeah, oh yeah, that's cheaper than buying the hook. It's like, do I? I'll just, I won't take the toll road this this day. All the, that money toll right road. there. You mean one exit? You'll yeah, just skip one, one section. One exit. The and there's there's going to be no traffic at 28. I'm going to pop into the regular lane and pop back. I've oh, done that. Just paid the juice. I've looked at it and the toll's like five dollars. I'm like, ooh, if I don't do that, that's an extra bet I could place tonight. Legal had some questions last night. We're watching Sopranos, and somebody asked for the VIG, and she kind of looked at me. I'm like, eh. So that's a percentage payout alone. It's also what people call the juice. So she had all <laughs> kinds of questions on the VIG. Like, poker rooms take it. They take it in Pai Gao. They take it in Baccarat. There's a lot of VIG. Uh, Tim's, what about year two that you do like in the parlay? 
Uh, yeah, Denny and Chase. Uh, I kind of just covered my ass with a couple playoff guys I haven't really bet on that I think could run well, top 10. And then Chastain Truex, that's just strictly numbers at, at Vegas. Uh, I'm sure Russ can back me up there. Plus 185 is a pretty good number, too, betting-wise. Truex, top 10 in the last eight, Vegas. Love it. Um, we got matchups. We got a little orange in the matchups. I'm going to go through these. Larson and Byron. I actually think that's a Byron bet, at plus 150 to beat Larson. I don't. I think that's an absolute bet. I think at the beginning of the year that was a heads-up match. Late, it's been Larson with more speed. But I like Byron over Larson. Larson probably is going to win the race, but if he doesn't win the race, Byron could beat him. I like plus 150 to beat one driver, although the professor's shaking his head no. Or which way? No, no I, I agree with you. I, I thought you said you were going to take Say it one Larson. more time. Sorry, hold on. That might have that just dumped on the internet. One more time, you do what? I, I thought you were trying to bet it the other way. I was like, I no, can't No, no, Byron, plus 150 to beat one driver. That's, how I have to, that's what I'm going to say. Now, I know he's beating the favorite, but let's just talk about this again. Plus 150 to beat one guy. I'll take it. I would take Byron. Oh, let's just run the numbers. Season, head-to-head, Byron Larson. Season. He's had 32 races. Let's just assume you're averaging plus 150, Tampa. So of the 32, you need to win this bet basically 12 times is a profit. Yeah, so it's, it's 17 to 14 this season for Larson. So 14 times you'd have won, one time there's no action, or there's only been 31? Only been 31. Well, because Larson wasn't in the 600. So. The six, yeah. Co- yep. So I'm going to give that win to Byron. Let's stay in the matchups. Elliot Logano. Elliot minus 105. It should be Chase Elliott. Those numbers are wrong. Chase Elliott should not be the, the, the dog to Logano. Not a mile and a half tracks. That's why I have it highlighted. And, well, definitely not this this season either. Which is the season we're betting in, folks. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, it's you said mile and a half tracks, which I agree with you, but then also the season. So it's, it's I like it. I laid over the guy. I saw the pencil. Mecha- is that a mechanical pencil? Did you just click out a little bit of lead? No, this no is it's a, a pen. pen. Okay, I was like, yeah. holy smokes. I thought he went all the way back to Spanish Jeez. class. No. I'm left-handed. I'd be wearing that thing all over my hand all day. You're lefty? Yeah, lefty. Oh, you and Junior. What and me. Hell? You're a lefty, too? Yep. Is all DH gr- right? Righty or lefty? I know he golfs lefty. He's, I don't know. Right. He's right. He plays pickleball right-handed. I know that. Things I never thought I'd hear. <laughs> um, I have a couple other matchups to discuss, but I don't know how much down the road we want to go here. All right, we like Elliot over Logano. Jimmy Johnson, John Hunter Nemechek. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I'd hammer John Hunter Nemechek if it wasn't minus 130. I think you're on it anyway, bud. <laughs> Probably. That's two exits on 77. Also, yeah. can, I, can I interrupt? I want to thank uh, NBC because on the last couple laps, they showed the top five, and there was another the playoff standings underneath. And then there was in the middle there was a there was a scrolling ticker of the rest of the field, loved it. I don't know who said that in the meeting, but that was phenomenal. Yeah, Keep that going. Friendly, Tim. No, they've been you. doing that every f- week. Good Have job paying attention. Yes. Oh, well, I listen more than I watch. <laughs> Nima check and Bell, and they're head to heads this year. Let's have it. Nemechek and uh, Johnson. Sorry, I was, was going to say and Bell. It's a hammer, Bell. Nemechek and Johnson. Um, they're two and two. Or no, hold on. He's been more two and two this year on track type. Um, Nemechek five to to Johnson two. Now we're making more sense. How many races has Jimmy actually not crashed in since he's been back? I, I sorry to say it, but he I think he's had an incident in every race. That's my fear with this. Sorry, I was getting distracted by a call. What was the question? How many races has Johnson been in a wreck? Um, I don't think he's going to race without incident. Ju- he's been in two. He had two DNFs for accident, but. So I'm going to has... take a different approach. We can talk Jimmy and talk all this stuff. We can pick on John Hunter. I'm going to take a different approach. I don't think it's fair that anybody's going to come in in five or six starts and not run a full-time guy. 
but let's take them. I don't care if it's uh, Kamui Kobayashi at a road course, Joey Hand at a road course. I've said it. These damn things are hard as shit to drive. And we could pick on John Hunter, you know, but it's, this shit ain't easy. This is an intramural football. Like, you know, we're not out here like everybody plays along. I'm not going to do it. John Hunter can run on Saturdays and whip their butts and win races. He's proven it. He's won on Fridays in the truck series. He's won on Saturdays in Xfinity series. Cup is hard. Just because Larson makes it look easy or Byron makes it look easy or Denny at times makes it look easy, I'm not going to slap John Hunter. Like, I don't agree. This shit is hard. So I'm going to give John Hunter the, the, the hat tip over his teammate or team owner, anytime they run together, just because even as great as Jimmy was, he's not as young as he once was, he's not in his prime, and driving these cars are difficult, and the guy that does it every week should get the nod. Top Chevy. Boo. You like Chastain, 9-1. to one. I do. That's his good value. Chastain's numbers are really good here. And, I mean, Hendricks would be tough to beat, but for the best non-Hendrick guy, non hundred, I'll take it. A little, little sprinkle. If a non-playoff driver is going to win in the playoffs, Chastain's one of the few that are going to do it. That is something to be said for. He got, doesn't have a teammate in. He could care less anymore. He's going to do his thing. One at Kansas. Uh, top Toyota. Nah, oof, I don't love that. Top Ford. That's a grind as well. I think Ford under two and a half might be the play too. All right, so now we're into the props. Stage one in the race is about even money. Stage two in the race is a huge minus because it's happened a bazillion times, but I'm not betting that. Hold on. No. I, so, Russ, how many times is the stage winner at stage two won? Ten race. times. Ten times. So I think whoever wins stage two, you just live bet them. Because you're going to get better than minus 260 odds, most likely. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what the man Tim said is don't take this stage two winner at minus 260. Just watch the race. Watch our wonderful coverage on NBC. And whenever we award the stage two winner, just go to your app and live bet them to win the race. It's going to be at least even money or better. It's not going to be minus money at that point. And you're going to get the same bet at way better action. 35 minutes into the pod, Tampa has dropped a magical golden nugget on the listener. That's why you listen. If our degenerate four-pack is as good as it has been for the last three weeks, you should just stop listening now. <laughs> Take that nugget and run. What were you saying, Russ? It's been 10 of 14 times that the stage I two love it. I love it. Driver to lead a lap. We've done pretty good on these. Nine and a half. How did we do last week on the props? We didn't bet any of those. What do the numbers say for this week, Russ? It's right at that number. I don't like that. I don't like either of these props. That's right on the average. All right. How about lead lap finish? Same thing, right on the average. I think when he said I don't like either of these, he meant both. Oh, I was. I quit listening to him. Margin of victory. Uh, I think you have to take point three five and the bottom two bets at points at plus six two five. You got to take both of them. As close as the mile and a half, Kansas was like the sixth closest finish in victory or something like that. Like the mile and a half. There may not be overtime, and it may be stretched out, but I definitely want under a tenth and a half and under three and a half. Ten- three and a half tenths is like a few car lengths. So you're talking about the first, the first three? At there? least the first two. I could argue the first three if you wanted to go even more. Okay. Give you a little protection. Listen, you could do anything under a second if you really wanted to, but your winning is going to be very small, right? But you could do yeah. anything under a second. Margin of victory at mile and a half hasn't been over a second in... Whew. How often has the race finished under caution? Only twice. Out of how many? 33. I hate to say it, but Steve's not wrong on that one. Lead changes at 19 and a half. I'm taking the over. He's going to say no because somebody's going to dominate. So the last two you would have won, the previous two you would have lost. So Yeah, so even money. I'm taking over. Plus, I'm, I'm asking for lead changes. That's like, that's like a high score football game. That's what you're cheering for. Mm-hmm. Uh, real quick, and we're going to move on to the degenerate four-pack. Chevy's in the top 10. Ford's in the top 10. Toyota's in the top 10. Chevy's three and a half over is a monster favorite. So I think the only way you bet this is if you believe the under is the cash at plus 165. It really comes down to the Fords, to be quite honest, because I think there's going to be at l- three Chevys, pretty easy. The fourth Chevy de- depends on how many Fords can get up there, because I don't think you can get enough Toyotas to fill the top 10. So you're really betting on at least three Fords. That's my quick math, right? I have three Chevys, which is why the over, or excuse me, 
I have three Toyotas, which is why the number's three and a half. I think three is an easy number to get to. I have th- two Fords, five Chevy. Like, man, the lines are great. I, I'd have to avoid all this. <laughs> yeah. Some bitch and Russ ruined it again. All right, let's real quick, before we move along, is there anything else? We're talking Xfinity? I think Almirola is the must bet, right? Plus 400. Almirola is the must bet. Professor, disagree? Yeah, I agree. I know he's not a playoff car, but there's this owner's thing. Nothing we're going to get into on here. Almirola is the must bet. All right, let's get in it. Degenerate four-pack. Basically, four bets in a parlay every week. It's a small wager, but a lot of excitement. We uh, usually do it by – I have to check what time this game is. Sorry, hold, please. Mine's a Sunday night game. Bad. Monday. Oh, no, I'm going to be well before Monday. that. Monday. I'm going to have to change my bet. I don't want to be the first one. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't no. change, though. You can't change. I mean, you can, but. I think I have a Saturday at 7 p.m. For the record, screw Kyle McCord in Syracuse. You couldn't score four more points against NC State? All I know is I won that bet. Yeah, and That's you guys it. had to buy down my my damn points. I didn't even need them. I got Missouri over Auburn money line. What's that money line number? Minus one eighty four. I got okay. I like that. Russ. I like that bet. I like that bet. My game is seven p.m. The football school of Vanderbilt University takes on Ball State. Oh, baby. And we are taking Vanderbilt team total over 41 and a half. They're running the number up. Team total over 41 and a half. No, repick. Oh, Lord. No. <laughs> I've got 42 and a half on FanDuel. Oh. Wait, hold on. No, they ha- I have noticed there are – is there an alternate number? Yes. Sorry, yes. I got it. What's the alternate? You can go whatever you want. 41 and a half is minus 130. You can even go lower. Yeah, I like, took up with my 41 and a half number. Take all it. right, 41 and a half. All right, Trav, what you got? Oh, I'm, it's me, right? Yeah, I'm Monday. All right, I'm going Sunday Night Football. Oh, I love this. The dumpster, I, the dumpster fire. This. New York football je- uh, Jets over the Steelers with new Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers. Money line. I mean, we don't even know who's starting quarterback for the Steelers. I love this pick. I, Russell Wilson, I think, is going to start. That's that's my angle here. How many quarters does he play? Two, but I don't think I don't think it's going to matter. I actually they like to win pick. this game. They got to win this game. All right, I'm going Monday Night Football. The first one. There's two games. Give me Ravens money line versus Buccaneers. All right. All right. So we've got Missouri money line, Vanderbilt over 41 and a half team total. Uh Jets money line, Ravens money line, that's plus 617. Uh our usual unit play would be $123 payout. I love it. We need it. We need it. All right, folks. There's the degenerate four pack. We're into the round of eight of NASCAR. We're Dude, heading west. On. Are there any other yes. football bets you, you got for the weekend yet? Tim's any Russell any football bets? Well, I am. Can I tell you a bet that I will not miss out on for the rest of the year? Patriots, Syracuse, Northwestern, Vandy parlay every week. My daughter's Ooh. at Northwestern. My son's at Vandy. My wife went to Syracuse. It would have hit last week. I didn't have any action on it. I feel like he did on Christopher Bell. I feel like Tampa. I'm not missing it anymore. Steve, Steve, what school did you go to? Because those are three prestigious schools. Well, they don't give you high school lines. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to tell that. I like that. that Every week, Tampa. Now, I look, like that a lot. So, for instance, this week I have to decide if Northwestern's just going to beat Wisconsin. It's a seven point, so I will probably take the seven and a half, take the touchdown. Yeah, they're not winning. It. Um, the Vandy is a huge sp- spread. I'll probably take the spread. Uh, and I haven't looked up the Syracuse game yet, but I'll probably take them money line. I think Syracuse might be off this, this week. week. No, I think they're dogs. I think they get three and a half point dogs, right? Who are they up against? Actually, are they off? I think they're off. Um, yeah, they're off. 
Next game is against Pitt. So, all right, so it's a two-way this time. Northwestern or Vandy. I'm not going to miss it anymore. I, I'm in. That's, that's fun. You know what that would have paid last week with the, th- with the upsets? I don't even want to know. It's oh, it's, it's a ridiculous multiplier. Oh, man. I like it. Yep. Sold. What else? What else you boys like on football? You got anything? Uh, give me Jalen Milrow, 50 rushing yeah. yards versus Tennessee, plus 110. I might go a little lower. Um, I got Indiana minus 6.5, Illinois plus 3.5. Indiana, it blind play. You're riding it till they lose. Against Nebraska? Yeah. I, I, listen, they've been so good to me. I think you and I might be on different sides of that. That's, that's fine. And don't even get me started in the NFL. Just fade Carolina and the Patriots. Give me Miami, Florida, minus four and a half versus Louisville. I don't think Louisville is good. Did you say Miami, Florida? If you don't say of Ohio, we know it's Florida. He's <laughs> an Ohio State guy. Let me tell you how the rest of the world, when you say Miami, other than about 2,000 of you that live in this or state of Ohio, we know it's Miami. Well, I said that because also Miami of Ohio, I think, is going to be on my card, too. <laughs> Chop would love you. That's where he's from. He's an alum. Really? Oh, yeah. Him and Ben Roethlisberger. Yep. Oh, yeah. I didn't go to that college either, in case you were wondering. <laughs> <laughs> you know what this is? I'm going to tell you what this is. This is like the tale of two retired high school quarterbacks trying to figure out who's still good going to play pickleball. All right, ladies and gentlemen, my other job calls, which means i got to sign off from this podcast. Football this weekend, racing in Vegas. One of my favorite towns. Professor doesn't come. Don't worry. I'll be there. It's going to be awesome. Professor's going to let. So who's letting the, the chicken out? Oh, don't worry. It's, it's a time release door. They let me out. About 5 a.m. <laughs> I'm going to tell you how I do Vegas, though. All you guys, oh, it's going to be up late. It's going to be this. That's not how it works for me. I'm going to have dinner right in the feathers, 4.30. Right back down to the casino, 4.30 a.m., two coffees, cards, until it's time to go to the racetrack, boys. That's the beauty of a city that never sleeps. You can get up early and fit right in. Sometimes he's a little late. Sometimes he's a little late. A little late? Yeah, well, it's been known to happen. If I'm on a hot streak, you have to come get me to go to the track. That's right. It's a big time. All right, the round of eight is upon us. NASCAR, here we go. Get all your bets in and may all your bets pay off.